Hello and welcome back to another episode of my Minecraft Medieval Let's Play series. I'm your host, Dr. Banana, PhD. Do not forget my doctor credentials. Seven years in banana school to make it all worth it. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to make it too weird there. Right now I am in my kitchen, or the cooking area of the Japanese style bakery. And I have a lot in store for today. I have a new building that I'd like to start construction on, and I plan on doing some more exploring in those new chunks. So, we have a lot to do. Let's be on our way. <laughs> Don't mind him, I'll explain him in a second. I'm over in the new chunks right now, going caving, seeing what I see, so I can get a little bit more deep slate and some stones, as I've been trading a lot of that with the masons to get a lot of stuff. Comes in handy for some emeralds. Anyway, I am down here in the mines, and what do I find? I find not one, not just one geode, but two geodes so close to each other. Oh wait, hold on. Oh wait, hold on. <laughs> I might have jumped the gun there a little bit. So this is the geode that we already discovered, but I did find one that's right next to it. I had no idea. This place was dark, it was so dark, and I only let the surrounding area because I got excited. <laughs> of the dripstone. I don't know if you remember in the first episode. But there's a geode right there and I'm so excited about it. Hopefully I don't die with these guys. <laughs> but we get to get some more calisite as well and that's something I'm very excited about. So let's go plunder this guy. So I just now broke through and oh my goodness. Oh goodness this one is huge. Or I guess technically the same size as the other one, but still, it's so exciting to see. No! 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 <laughs> okay, hopefully it didn't destroy too many budding amethysts. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. I did not get the coordinates. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, let's go find that. Well, I just don't believe it. We have yet another geode as we were discovering uh, everything in this cave. After breaking my way into here, this is a small one, but even still, we are so grateful to find any and all geodes. So, I'm gonna demolish this one too. <laughs> At least the calisite, um, and I will be back. I might actually keep this one intact. Finding another geode, even one more after that one I showed you, stumbled across this mine shaft, and we finally happen to find some glow berries, and I am so incredibly excited. We can finally have the lush cave blocks, most of them anyway. Uh, we can use the glowberries to add it to our axolotl temple, and I am so incredibly excited. I'm going to put that in my Richetes box. Over in the industrial district, to take a look at this building here. This is the original smoker building, one of the very first buildings that I built in this realm, not including the, the masonry, the quarry area. Uh, this is my first attempt at creating a medieval style and I would say that I did okay with it. Um, this is where it all started and it all began. <laughs> Excuse the uh, the hole from the lightning. And my building technique and style has evolved quite drastically as we can see in that building and that one there. So I want to reflect that in this entire world. I think it is time to upgrade this building. Let me start the demolition process and then the reconstruction process. I'll see you there. The demolition is now complete. Here is a little setup that aids me in doing so, but there is the large gap where it used to be the smokehouse, and which may or may not contain the new building. I'm still deliberating on whether or not I should put it here, or over in this section, of which I cleared out a space of the trees, or I might even move around these uh, animals and put it in this section here, so that it could be closer to these buildings, to create a better view. I'm still not sure. See, if I put it over here, I don't want this entire space to be bare. I don't know. Much to think about. Time to play around in a creative testing world, and once I get a good grasp, then I'll be able to go into full construction mode. This project is still underway. I needed to gather much more dark oak wood because I was quickly running out. Uh, so I'm just going to be putting away a lot of these saplings if I remember the right place to put them. But something that happened in between the takes is that I migrated my Mojang account 
to my Microsoft account, and that gives you a cape. So this is the new cape that I got. Look at that. How fancy and how fit for a king. I am going to develop a new skin to try to go with this cape just to look a little bit more like royalty. Uh, one of the very cool things is if I apply the elytra, it's part of the elytra. Look at that. Spread that cape a little bit once I crouch. But that is looking fancy. Just putting the last finishing touches to this build with this little flower pot here. I'm so excited to show you the rest of the build. Let's just get everything on. Get that right there, get that right there. Get some flowers in here. I think, let's go, maybe let's do this one. Give it to me, please. Oxide Daisy, that will do for now. Let's have a little look-see at this build that I'm so excited to show you. Take a step back and take it all in. Look at that. I tried to challenge myself with this build, get it a little bit more detailed and a little bit more uh, medieval fantasy forward, and I feel like I have made it there. Uh, take a little look at everything here. I love this little downwards corridor here. There's going to be a door right here to a cellar where we're going to have additional storage, a nice grand door, some of these beautiful little decorations around the side, and a little decoration up there. I might switch around those flowers a little bit, but I'm loving this uh, little decor. If we take a little look, it continues on this side. These ones are much smaller. And then at the back, very, very similar. No windows on the back here because there's going to be more trees. I'm going to populate, put the trees back here. Maybe I might do something with this uh, skeleton farm, but I am happy with this. So this is just the exterior. I don't have the interior just yet, as we can see on the inside. Going to make this a little restaurant as well. Maybe a little kitchen over on this side, a little eating and seating area over on this side. Maybe add a second floor. Definitely add some windows, some additional detail, but overall, very happy with this build. I'm getting everything ready next to the smoker so that it looks all nice and neat and deliberate and not just haphazardly thrown together. And I am trying to incorporate a lot of the new blocks and some new aesthetic to go in line with the smoker. I think it's going to look very nice in the final product. I was going to wait to show you until after everything's all complete. However, something happened while I was working on this area that I just had to show you. There was a thunderstorm, and it converted so many of my pigs into these zombie piglins. There are so many of them. Oh my goodness. I don't know if this area was struck over and over with lightning, or it just has a very large radius, because these there are quite a bit of these guys. I don't know whether or not to keep them or to get rid of them. I'm not quite sure. Uh, you'll have to let me know in the comments if I should or shouldn't keep them. But in the future, these little things are going to have these little roofs on top to pr pr protect them from the rain and prevent them from getting uh, struck by lightning. The pens are now complete. I am so happy with how these turned out. It took a little bit to try to get them in the right order, in the right sections, and move all of these animals into their proper locations, but I feel like it's uh, worth it in the end. Uh, some of these empty ones are going to be for additional animals. I'm going to have a whole bunch of sheep in this one for mutton, and I'm looking to get foxes in these, I think, just to have. That would be pretty cool. And then in the very front one up there will be rabbits, because I will want to to make some rabbit stew, have every type of uh, food source in this game. Speaking of, I did create a, a glowberry farm. I love the way this looks. It is so very, very cool. Let me just go on inside. We only have, oh, it's kind of hard to close this thing because uh, we're interacting with this hitbox here. But if we go inside, it's so lit up because of all of these glowberries. I only have this one right here for the event of when I harvest all these out. I don't want it to be completely pitch black, but I love the roofing of it, where not all of it is a complete solid roof, just the parts that you need to harvest. I did think of having this entire thing 
covered with these glowberries, but then I realize it would be pretty hard to actually harvest them off of the vines because you'd be interacting with all those hitboxes. <laughs> yeah, these guys are everywhere. Uh, I did release all of them when I transferred all of the pigs, and they just decided to go everywhere. So, uh, yeah, little Easter eggs. You'll see these guys walking around. So now my last and final thing to do for this area, aside from the inside, which I'm probably not going to work on today, is uh, create the pathing system. So I'm going to have a path that leads over to Lightning Thunder's base. Go along over here, maybe link up with these paths here, and go along and connect to that bridge. And some little dirt paths, or not dirt paths, uh, pathing blocks <laughs> like that over on that side. And create a proper bridge that extends from here and connects up with this path going that way. And I'm going to be doing a, a much more paths to tie this all together to make it feel properly intentional. So the path will cut across here into this bridge. This will go along that way to connect to this entrance. There's going to be one jetting across here to go to the spawner, maybe loop back around. And the path will also continue from there all the way over here and connect up with this. I do believe I am going to adjust this shoreline, maybe bring it out a bit so I can do a little bit more of a diagonal there. I did adjust this shoreline here. Let me go ahead and show you on this side. I widened it and made it a little cliff face there. I feel like that's very nice. Uh, eventually in the future I will do something with the lighting so it's not just torch spam. But this area is coming along quite nicely. I'm very happy with it. Sometime in the future, I will be redoing this bridge path right here. It's nice, but I feel like it could be much better, maybe tying it in uh, to the aesthetic of this area even better, making it feel much more intentional. The paths are complete. Just finally finished putting these guys down, and I gotta say, I'm really happy with it. Here, notably, we have the deep slate transitioning into the regular path and I'm happy with it. I was debating on either this gradient or maybe it was a hard cutoff, but I do like the gradient. It makes it uh, looks like it was slowly incorporated into the path or maybe the path was slowly degrading or, or this entrance way, so they uh, try to patch it up with some path materials of some sort. I also finished this under basement area, the cellar, and I gotta say, I really like the look of this. It's very dark and cold, uh, as we can see from these um, soul lanterns, really gives a nice aesthetic. It's not nearly as bright, so I had to add a few of these here. Um, and once I get stuff on the inside, like storage and decoration, then I can play around with the lighting a little bit more. But yeah, I really like how this turns out. It's, uh, it's very confining and very, very grim in there. <laughs> If we take a little look, we see the two paths coming off of the central bridge right there and then converging into this path. And eventually I'm going to connect um, this path into the stairway into this smoke place, the smoker. And then e much further into the future, I'm going to try to add these transitionary blocks, these uh, texturing into the rest of the paths. I might make this um, even skinnier, it's a bit wide. So we made the paths going that way. I cleaned up the chess monster that I've had, I think it was right here, since basically the start of this world over there, because it was blocking some of the view for the smokehouse. Added the paths going over this way, over towards Lightning Thunder's base. Added a little bit more paths here. Took out the glowberries because I wanted to rearrange the direction that they were headed. I didn't really like the the uh, layout of this going in, of it being uh, perpendicular, but now I changed it to where it could be parallel, and I feel like this will go much better. The flow of it is in one unified direction. So I just changed up the rafters, and now I have all of these grow in the proper orientation. And the paths continue on to the main central path, the stone path, as you can see here, over to Lightning Thunder's base. I don't know if I've shown an update of Lightning Thunder's base since the last episode, but that tower, looking gorgeous. What a, what a nice aesthetic. 
I'm gonna have to borrow a lot of this for the Dark Cathedral. Hopefully, hopefully I can get that Dark Cathedral done. But I stop for right here for now, because I don't know if I'm gonna continue it all the way to the entrance of Lightning Thunder's base. I think I'll have to stop it here. I'll see what uh, uh, Lightning Thunder wants to do with the pads connecting to their base. Just gonna do some final finishing touches. Oh, wait, that's not what I need. Some final finishing touches to the smokehouse. Get some glass to really tie it together. Fly out of the entrance of the cathedral. Nice, what a view. This is beautiful. Let's see if I know where, where I'm going. Hopefully to the dark cathedral, and hopefully I can make it there alive. <laughs> Should better look. There we are. And this is really going to tie it together, if I remember what chest I put it in. Uh, where is it? Here we go. Yes, these are the ones that I need. I'll meet you over there. Time to apply those finishing touches. Ooh. Okay, I like the black windows. A little bit harder to see, especially when you're looking up into the dark room. Once you get on an off axis, they look pretty nice. And tie the room together. I think this is probably the best choice to go with because it stands out the most. If I went with a lighter uh, glass, like a dark gray glass or even a light gray glass, I think that would be even harder to see. So I feel like this one is the move here. And then have to do those guys up there. Got to be careful. So these <laughs> are upside down barrels add some texture little little pro tip for you kind of breaks up the monotony of just having one plain wood floor but as you can see if i right click pretty much anywhere on the floor i will open the barrel of course not all of it is barrels i do have the regular spruce wood so that it's not just one consistent texture oops but do have to be careful with building in here <laughs> otherwise that could be very annoying and I love this texture. I love this new block calcite. It is amazing. It is a step above diorite. Diorite is a little bit too harsh and rough of a texture for me to use all the time. Of course, I have used it in the past. And with this texture pack, the Vanilla Tweaks texture pack, it really reduces the contrast and the noise. So it's a little bit softer on the eye. But it's great to add when texturing with this white stone. Always loved the white stone. I think we needed more of it. I'm really hoping for a more variety of brownstone items. With the new blocks introduced in uh, the wild update off of uh, Minecraft Live, we're gonna be getting some mud bricks, which I think are really cool. And of course, my idea still stands that I think that we need the smooth dripstone or a polished dripstone. That would be lovely. But I'm going to add the last finishing touch to this area before we start the interior, which will happen on another episode. So let me just find the uh, central area where I want to do this. I think right there is good. Alrighty. Let's get this all together. Man, this shovel really, really goes through all of the dirt so fast. So I really have to be careful. Okay, let's see here. I wonder how obvious it is for me just doing this. Can you tell from right now? Perfect. Put that there. It's all coming together. Oop. Get some of this there. Maybe you can see where I'm going with this. Oh no, it's raining again. Oh, this is a thunderstorm. Oh, let's go have a sleep. This will really help it come together you can probably tell what this is if you can't that's okay this oh goodness this is going to be the smoker or an outside smoker to the smokehouse we have to indicate it somehow also this is going to add a lot more detail i'm using some of this nether quartz so it can look like uh, raw meat that's being smoked at least to the best of my ability here let me add the very last bit here with my magic book and this armor stand, this magic book, is courtesy of Vanilla Tweaks. It's a data pack that you're able to implement on your Minecraft worlds, but only if you're playing on Java Edition. That's the edition that's exclusive to computers, unfortunately. 
hopefully be able to add free data packs in Bedrock very soon. But it allows me to do some wizarding magic like this. Let me see if I can do this properly. It's always a little bit tricky. Block on surface. Okay, there we go. Now we're just going to have to adjust this a bit. Let's go in the negative x direction. That's a good start. That's a good start. So that's negative x, and we need negative z as well. Okay. Nudge. Let's go plus 1. Let's go plus 1 again. Perfect. That's right where we need it. Uh, let's go one more for good measure so that there's just no little gap. Perfect. And then nudge. We're going to go y in the positive, so y plus 8. That's pretty good. Let's nudge it one more time. We'll do plus 3. All right. A little bit too much. Minus 1. Minus 1. That's coming together. Yeah, that's perfect. That's a good height. All right. Now go back into the z. Minus 8. Too much. We're going to do plus 3. Oh. And then minus 1. Nudge, minus one. Oh, that was the Y, but that's fine. Nudge, minus one. Would you look at that? There we go, some minor variation. So it looks kind of animal-like. Very cool. It's slightly larger than this one here. It's slightly higher. Give it some variation. I'm going to do it one more so it's a little bit more noticeable. Perfect. Now it looks like we're actually smoking meats out in front of the smokehouse. I love this data pack. You can really add so many details. I will leave us off with one final thing, and that's to, oh, before I jump the gun, look at all of our progress from the air. And wow, it is so nice to have a little fly around to see everything. Let me get some more height. Approach from this direction here. Oh, well, that's gorgeous. And man, look at that. The, it, this area feels much more intentional and much more complete. Of course, I have a lot of work to do, but this is a fantastic foundation. And so where I'm going now is to the cartography building so that I can update these maps and see it for how it, it is on the surface. Let's see here. It's going to be this one. Let's see if I can pop, up, pop it off. There we go. Oh, it's going to be more than one. Perfect. We take that one too. Actually, it will be three. This is a large area. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> but let's take a look at the map of old. So this is what everything used to be before. That was before the Japanese style bakery and the new nether blocks to create the new lumber yard. And of course this area, which we're semi-familiar with that we just now upgraded. So Let's go take a little look. I'm going to run out of rockets very, very soon. Hopefully I don't. This is the last one. We can make it. No worries. Let's load everything up. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, boy. This is so nice. Oh, that looks amazing. Look at that area. Of course, that is the bakery, but we can still see some of the new pins on the very top. Where does this one go? That one goes there. Perfect. This one goes there. And that one goes there. Let's take a little look. Hmm. I think I did something wrong here. Oh, no. I need to update this one. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what was happening. No, not that one. This one. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I'll go do that. There it is. All fully completed. Let's have a little zoom in. And man, that is a nice site. It doesn't take up nearly as much space as the other two buildings, but still very good nonetheless. And look how much more complete these pathing looks. Wow, it's so nice to get an aerial view. For a reference, let's look at the map of old. See, no interconnected paths for everything. It just kind of stops abruptly. This is all by itself here. This stops abruptly. <laughs> A whole bunch of stone in the middle, kind of dirtying it up. But with this over here, everything just feels much more intentional. And I think I'm going to put those little path blocks 
in between these pens, much like I have with these crops. Oh, I need to update Lightning Thunder's area. I will save that for next time. Thank you everyone for watching and tuning in. I appreciate you all being here, joining me on my adventures, and join me next time for my next adventures. I look forward to seeing you. Have a good one.